Hey guys, I'm coming here with a question of the week, and this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm really excited to start this out. Basically, I want you guys to send me any questions you have on either calculus or AP physics um, to questions at bothellstemcoach.com, and uh, I'm just going to answer for you, go through some problems with you, just get a little bit more, uh, give you guys some you know tips and some ideas on how to break down problems and maybe just you know, hopefully you'll learn a little bit. So if you do have a homework question or you have a problem that you're stuck on and you're not sure how to break it down, send it into there and I might pick it out for the question to do this week. So, um, you know, one thing I want to say is this is the kind of thing that I work with with my students. I think this is one of the best ways that they get support is that when they have a question, they don't know how to do a problem, they can submit it and get a breakdown like this. So let's take a look at this problem here. This is a kinematics question. So object A is dropped from rest at the top of a building. So when I'm doing this, I'm always drawing a picture. I'm not even reading the rest of the question. I'm saying I got a building here. It's dropped from rest, so here's the object, the velocity is zero. It's going to be dropped, so it's going to fall to the ground with a height h. So this building has a height h. So sometimes when you're breaking down a question, it's really important, especially when they're kind of a lot of words, I really just like to just draw it as I'm reading the question. At the same moment, another object B is projected vertically upwards from the base of the building. Okay, so, object, so this is object A, this is object B. It has an initial upward speed of u from the base of the building. Provide that the provide that the mag provided oops typo in there that the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration is g. How long do objects a and b meet to each other? So this guy's gonna fall downward, and this guy I'm gonna use a different color actually. I probably use a different color for this guy just so you guys can illustrate. But basically, this guy's gonna go up, and this guy's gonna come down, and we would like to know when do they meet, right? So at some point they're gonna meet here, and they're gonna collide with each other, or you know they're gonna meet at the same time, whatever. Okay, and we would like to know that time. Now, when we're doing kinematics, one of the things I always teach my students is you wanna just list out the variables. What are the knowns, what are the unknowns? So let's look at for the object A. There's a displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. And when you're doing kinematics, you've gotta assign a direction. Which way is positive, which way is negative? I'm gonna say down is the positive direction. I typically do that when things are falling. You can choose it either way, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what do we know here is we don't know the displacement. It falls some distance. The initial velocity is the velocity at the top of the motion, which is zero. The final velocity, we don't know. The acceleration is downward with g, so downwards the positive direction, so make that positive g. And I do want to know the time. Okay, how about, now I don't have enough information here to solve for the time. I need three pieces of information to use any of the kinematic equations. How about object B? Well, let's see, the displacement, I guess I don't know. The initial velocity, let's, for this guy, I'm gonna say up's the positive direction. And that's because usually when I throw things upwards, I make up the positive. You do not have to, but you gotta be consistent with your direction. So the initial velocity is upward with U, so that makes it positive U, because I said up was the positive direction. Uh, final velocity, again, I don't know how fast it's going when they meet. The acceleration is downward at G, but downward is the negative direction for this problem. And so you can use two different coordinate, you know, two different conventions for the two different objects. And again, I want to know the time. Now, I do not know anything about the time. Um, and I, again, I don't have enough information here. I know you, you know, it's like, they want you to do this in terms of U and G and H. You can use those variables to answer this question. So then it's, then it's like, okay, well, what else do we know? We do know this H. How are we going to factor that in? Well, we know like this guy's going to fall. Let's say he falls a distance. We'll call it, um, uh, I'm going to call it L, then that means this guy is going to cover a distance, go upward, his displacement is going to be H minus L, right? And that's because the sum of these two have to be like H, right? This guy falls some amount, this guy rises some amount, the sum of those two amounts have to be H. So now we can put in another variable. Now we're adding in a new unknown in this situation, but that's still useful for us to choose a kinematic equation. We know this guy falls a distance L. He starts here, he ends here. He falls a distance L. So his displacement is downward with L. This guy rises a distance H minus L and ups the positive direction. So that's positive H minus L. And so then we're going to say, all right, so what equation relates these four variables? Some of the quantities that I'm relating and the one that I'm looking for is going to be this equation, right? This equation is going to relate for both, both of them. So then you're going to say this is L is 0 times T plus 1 half GT squared. 
or you get L is equal to 1 half GT squared. Okay. How about this guy? Same equation, but I plug in you know, these variables. H minus L is going to equal to U times T, okay, uh, V0 T, and then 1 half G, that's going to be minus 1 half GT squared, and that's because... Um, that's because um, um, uh, it's, the, the, it's negative G, right? When you plug the A in for negative G there. Okay, so then we have that. And so now we're going to say, okay, how are we going to combine these? Well, this one I can plug in to there, and I get H minus 1 half GT squared. And that gets rid of the L, even though I added a new unknown. I was able to get rid of it. And look what happens if I add 1 half GT squared to both sides. I get H is equal to U times T, and therefore T is equal to H over U. Okay, so that's the general idea of how I would explain a problem to a student if they had a question like that. And if you guys have any other questions like that, I'll pick the one that I think is the most interesting or something that I could, you know, explain or, you know, that gives you good, interesting insights. But go ahead and submit it. Again, you just send it to, you know, questions at bothelstemcoach.com and I'd be happy to take a look at that. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below if you do, uh, or comment, like, or subscribe if you do like it. Um, and I'll see you in the next question.